I, I think I, I've got two claims to fame um, in my life. One is being Taylor's business partner, uh, when, and uh, the other is that in 1967, I was a student and I went to a lecture course as an undergraduate by a, a guy called Professor Sir William Hodge, who was the worst, I did a mathematics degree at Cambridge, and, and he was the worst lecturer that you could imagine. I mean, he wouldn't be allowed near a student <laughs> these days. Uh, and he shouldn't have been allowed near a student then, but he was actually head of department, so to speak. <laughs> and, and a very pig-headed guy, he was, had a notoriously, he was notorious for being a bad lecturer, but I decided I was going to go to this course and I was going to stick it out. So there were about 400 students doing maths at Cambridge, and I think eight of us stuck out this course. <laughs> and my colleagues, the system was you had individual or tutorial supervisions with somebody, and my colleagues had to find somebody to tutor me in this course. They found a guy, young, just finishing his time as a research student, called Stephen Hawking. Oh, so this is my other claim to fame. I was taught by <laughs> Stephen Hawking. It was not a very productive experience because I had such inadequate notes in this course. I mean, Hodge had all sorts of wonderful techniques. Like, I mean, you know that the purpose of lectures is to transfer the notes of the lecturer to the notes of the student <laughs> without passing through the brain of either. <laughs> and, and, the way that's done, and the way that's done in a maths lecture is this lecturer writes the notes on the blackboard and the student <laughs> copies them down. I used to read novels in lectures. And, 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 Anyway, the trouble with Hodge was he wrote the stuff on and then he wiped it off again <laughs> before he had time to see it. It was only on the board while he was between you and what was written, so it's very hard to get any decent notes. Anyway, uh, Stephen Hawking has recently died, so this is sort of in memory of Stephen Hawking, and it's the Galaxy Song from Monty Python, oh. Oh, uh, which you can find actually being sung by Stephen Hawking on YouTube if you work at it. Um, and I'm going to try and remember where it, how it goes now. Uh, sorry, it's, it's forced, it's in the same key. Um, um, <clears throat> I can never remember the tune till I get going. <laughs> Just remember that you're standing on a planet that's evolving and revolving at 900 miles an hour. It's orbiting at 90 miles a second, so it's reckoned the sun that is the source of all our power. Now the sun and you and me and all the stars that we can see are moving at a million miles a day. In the outer spiral arm at 40,000 miles an hour of a galaxy we call the Milky Way. <clears throat> our galaxy itself contains a hundred billion stars. It's a hundred thousand light years side to side. It bulges in the middle, 16,000 light years thick, but out by us it's just 3,000 light years wide. We're 30,000 light years from galactic central point. We go round every 200 million years. And our galaxy itself is one of millions of billions in this amazing and expanding universe. Our universe itself keeps on expanding and expanding in all the directions it can whiz. As fast as it can go, at the speed of light, you know, 12 million miles a minute, and that's the fastest speed there is. So remember when you're feeling very small and insecure, how amazingly unlikely is your birth. And pray that there's intelligent life somewhere out in space, because there's bugger all down here <laughs> on Earth. <laughs> I did find the tune. <laughs>